Welcome to KSP. This is my modded career, but this is not going to be part of the series. This is going to be an explanatory video about how I went about building this little toy, the crew transfer vehicle. It doesn't really look like a whole lot just like this. Someone on the Facebook group was asking me about I guess these docking port engines they saw here. Well, these aren't actually attached to the docking port at all. They're separate units. What I ended up doing when I was setting out to make this thing is I wanted to have a way to have a docking port on top or front, depending on your orientation of how you're looking at the thing, and have one on the bottom. The problem with having a docking port on the bottom was how in the world was I going to mount my engines because my docking port would be in the center. And I can't really use inline engines with this if I have the docking port in the center. The engine's not going to be in the center axis of the spacecraft anymore. The docking port's in the way. So I was thinking, well, I could just do some radial engines. Like, I'll just tuck that away. And a radial engine that I could have used like, say I decided I was going to throw it on my standard size docking port here. I'll hold Alt because that's awesome like that. So yeah, if I had something like this and I need to have engines on the bottom, well, there's a couple ways to do it, and depending if you have mods or not. I have these engines here. These engines will radially attach anywhere you want. They're very useful. So that's basically what I ended up doing, essentially, only a little more fancy. The thing you could do if you had stock parts is you could use the Mark 55 engines, which have improved somewhat from when I last tried using them. They used to suck really badly, but these are kind of overkill. But I could toss on three of those guys on there and have a very impressive TWR of 2.537 right off the bat. So this thing can take off from curb and all by itself. And then if you really wanted to, you could toss on some landing legs onto the engines themselves or onto the sides of the, the main spacecraft. Like I could have gone like this and had them like that. But that's, it's a very wide footprint and I suppose it's quite stable like that. I could also go on something like this instead, which is a little less wide. But this is not what I ended up doing, obviously. I think that the Mark 55s look just hideous, and uh, I just don't feel it. So what I ended up doing is making this little truss frame thing here, and having them just bolted onto the base of this fuel tank. And because they're not attached to the center attachment node of the tank, I could toss on something else on there. I could toss on a, oh, I don't know, little fuel tank right there. Like, what that would look kind of stupid, but, uh, uh, just any old thing, right? Like, I could even have some toss like that and had, like, all sorts of, like, nifty, cool looking, awesome stuff. But that's not what I ended up using. I used one of these KW Rocket Tree conic tanks to stick it on there, like so. And basically that means my landing support structure for my landing legs and where I stick the engines is clipping into the tank. These particular engines that I used come with the Ace Pack Galaxy VR2s. You can think of them as being very, very similar to the LV909s. They have pretty similar stats except for they weigh a tenth of a ton lighter, and that's about it. I think they also have a similar vectoring range. Yep, yeah, half a degree. So if I was going to try to do this with stock parts, which it looked kind of stupid, I'd have something like that, which, well, it might actually work okay. Kind of. Let's see if that actually looks decent. Yeah, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could get away with that. Um, but that's not what I ended up doing. I, I have mods on my computer, on my game install, I figured why not. Now the other thing I have stuck on this 
truss, which is very busy, is landing lights. These are part of the aviation lights pack. And you'll see these little containers in here. These are hex cams. These are part of the TAC life support pack. I have small life support canisters and I have food canisters. This serves to bump my life support supplies. The short leg here is water. That's not a problem because I also have universal storage. And universal storage gives you some nifty little things. I have the hex core module here. This allows me to have eight little quadrants running around on the thing, so I have where is it? Water tank, food bag, another water tank, oxygen block, alkaline fuel cell. This generates water, so I could actually fill that with water up. And I... Hmm? Really? Oh, okay, I know why. Because I took the rest of my supplies off. So I go like that. I gain a little bit of extra water from that. Yeah, I gain like, what, a whole whopping day? Because this is the uh, utility spacecraft, I usually leave a bit empty. This doesn't have any science equipment on it to speak of. It has a directional antenna and it has an omnidirectional antenna. Now, this is probe controlled, in case I have a nub crew. And here's where the probe control sits. Now, typically, if you have your stuff buried in here like this, you will not be able to attach it on there. But I didn't attach it on there like that. I did something else. What I have is an octocore, the thin itty bitty midget one, stuck on a cubic octagonal strut because cubic oct octagonals don't weigh anything. And so I kind of just had it clipped on there like so. And then I stuffed it inside the middle of my big giant ASAS module, or SAS module here, which is hollow. So I've tucked in some RCS spheres and some A's little batteries. A's parts are kind of nifty, I like how they look. But that's how I ended up hacking that in there. So I went to the clipping tool and I shoved it inside kind of as close to being the center as I could from just eyeballing it in the VAB. And you can always hit C if you want to uh, find control with your uh, stuff. And then I just saw, okay, is it going to be in there, right? Because that will actually adjust my center of mass a small bit. Like, very, very small amounts. But it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So that's how I got around that little thing trying to stuff parts in the ASAS module. Because it's hollow, I should be able to stick stuff in it. Uh, the rest of it's fairly straightforward. Big beefy fuel tank, a slightly not so beefy fuel tank. A's fixed solar panels. I don't have folders on here at all. You can just barely see that I have A's little uh, RCS tank sticking out of there. So yeah, it's there's... You can kind of see it when I go to ghost mode there. It's, sphere here. Um, crammed quite a bit of features into this thing and I get 2.2 meter or kilometers of delta V and as it sits if I put it on the launch pad back there it wouldn't be able to lift off for time unless I got rid of some of this fuel. Like now I could just barely defeat gravity. Of course I'd also lose delta V but that's okay. I also have to run some extra RCS spheres down in the landing supports because I figured, hey, this is dead space. I might as well kind of fill it with something, which is kind of what I end up doing. I got a little bit clipped in there. So that was my mindset and methodology on how to approach this. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably don't need six of these stupid carpal attachment system tie-down points. I could probably get by with carrying only three of them at a time. Hey, that just reduces my part count. Yay, good deal. Um, part count is 64 parts now, it was lower before. Like, we'll go ahead and load up the older one. Block 1 design. Which I did retro-engineer in the probe core. 
So it has it had 53 parts before that because I ended up stuffing the probe core into it after the fact. But other than that, it, you'll notice that it's missing all the stuff back here underneath the supports. It's missing the little... I'm missing the lights down here. So this has no way of doing a night landing unless I do radar altimeter work. But other than that, it was capable, it worked. It has a slightly higher delta V and a slightly higher TWR because it has slightly less payload mass. But other than that, it works pretty well. I just needed something to beef up the life support duration of the thing. And that's is what I'm coming with. I also ended up scrapping the shielded docking port and going with unshielded one because I typically have been launching these things with something on top of it. So can't really. I figured this out the, the hard way. If I have my docking port, the game seems to suggest that you can put something on here. It's like, ooh, I can open this up, and then you go. Darn it, it won't connect. Why? I'm trying to press down Alt, but you don't see an attachment node there. There's nothing, nowhere for it to go, unlike down here, where there's lots of places I could put it. I can't put it down here at all. It won't connect. So I ended up saying, well, forget that then. I'll just put in an unshielded port. And then if I want to make another module, I just go like this and slap on like whatever I need to, like, uh, I don't know, something like like these, and then I can say, hey, look at it, I made myself a cargo extender little module thing. I could, like, dock this to the space station, and, or just fly around with, like, a whole crap ton of food. So that's the mindset. That's why I did it like this. Because then I could fly this thing around, either pushing something from the front, or I could have a larger section down here and be pushed by it what I did with this guy, which I have not launched, but I'm thinking I may take to Duna eventually. So I have this rather large extensive module which looks suspiciously like my Minmus and Moon Station, only has lots more science goodies on it, and tucked away in here is some LVNs for propulsion, and it is pushing the spacecraft along which would then land at Duna and come back. I'm not sure if three parachutes is enough to land on Duna and survive the landing, but I have the TWR for it, that's a good thing. And so basically this is the Block 2 CTV with a large mission module slapped on underneath it. So that's kind of what I've been ending up doing. Now I don't worry about making a launcher from scratch every time because that doesn't make any sense and no one ain't no one got time for that so what I've ended up doing is I have some sub assemblies I have a base lifter which I'll just slap on here like this bam like no wow that was weird it just didn't want to work all of a sudden like this okay so now I have my base lifter and everything's all kosher and cool right this is enough Delta V to get all this to Moon or Minmus and back fine without even having to resupply it or anything. If I'm lifting something on top of the CTV, I use this because I have to worry about pushing more of a payload and this has humongo beefy boosters. It works. It's effective. It does the trick. Um, I've been flying this in this career for quite some time. I've grown rather attached to it because it's it's flexible. It does what I need it to do. It's modular in that I can attach it to things. I've always been kind of fond of this capsule design anyway because it looks kind of cool. It has a nice in-vehicle uh, IVA mode. And it's very durable. So that's kind of how I went about approaching this, and this is the methodology why I did this. And I hope this doesn't bore everybody who click, decides to click on this video, because most people aren't really into KSP to figure out what people do to like in the VAB, the build portions. They want to see stuff blow up or want to see a mission get pulled up. But I'm a little more technical like that. I'm just that's just how I am. So anyway, I hope that helps some folks out, answer some questions that you probably didn't know you even had, and you all have a good day.